<sighs> this guy. Let me tell you, growing up, I didn't like Eddie Haskell very much. I knew a few guys like him. Hard to trust. I never understood why Wally wanted to be his friend. And his interactions with Wally's mom? Holy cow, could he lay it on thick. It's not surprising to me at all that both June and Ward could see right through Eddie. Okay, so now with all of that said, let's talk about Ken Osmond, the guy who played Eddie Haskell, who, by the way, was nothing like him. And even though his last name was Osmond, he was not related to these two. Let's just get that out of the way right now. Maybe if you went far enough back, you might be able to find some common ancestry. But for the purposes of this video, let's just say they're not related. Another rumor that would probably be good to dispel began when a very well-known shock rocker told a reporter that he was a real Eddie Haskell growing up. But that didn't mean that Alice Cooper actually played Eddie. Nope, he and Ken Osmond are two very different people. Although from everything that I've read, it sounds like they're both great guys. But we're not here to talk about Alice Cooper. Nope, this video is all about Ken Osmond. So without any further ado, here are five things that you might not have known about Ken. Number one is that Tony Dow has said that Ken was hands down the best young actor on the Leave it to Beaver set. Why did he say that? Well, it's because Ken was such a nice and decent guy that he had to be the best actor just to pull off a character as smarmy as Eddie was. The second thing you might not know is that to supplement his income during the final years of the show, Osmond was in the U.S. Army Reserve as an armorer and was granted leave to film episodes in return for personal appearances for the Army's special services. Clearly actors back then were not paid what they are paid now. The third thing is that after Leave it to Beaver ended, Ken became a police officer for the city of Los Angeles. After a decade on the force, he found himself in a gun battle that ultimately led to him getting shot five times. Due to his injuries, Ken was placed on disability and later on did have to take an early retirement. Item number four is that if you haven't noticed a trend by now, Ken is always looking for ways to serve. A perfect example of that is when Osmond visited a group of incarcerated veterans. He was there to lift their spirits and make them feel valued, but by the time that he was done with the visit, it wasn't just the prisoners who had benefited from the experience. The fifth thing is that Ken has become quite the author. His book Above and Beyond tells the inspirational stories of real-life heroes and currently has a 4.7 out of 5 stars rating on Amazon.com. Equally well reviewed is Ken's own autobiography simply titled, Eddie, The Life and Times of America's Preeminent Bad Boy. I'll post a link to both books on Amazon just in case you're interested in adding either of them to your personal literary collection. End of the day, Ken Osmond is a perfect example of how karma is supposed to work. Good things happen to good people most of the time. And Ken, unlike the character that he played on Leave it to Beaver and then later on when the show was revived in the 80s, well, he is one of the best. All right, that's it. If you're a fan of Leave it to Beaver and you're not a member of the Leave it to Beaver fan club Facebook group, get over there right now and do that. I promise you won't regret it. But wait, before you do that, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click on that thumbs up icon and what the heck, why not subscribe to my YouTube channel. I talk about music, movies, and television, mostly from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know, the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.